welcome. My name's Naira. I'm a GP pharmacist and I'm your host for today's health show on British Muslim TV. Now, today's topic of discussion, we will actually be um, touching on two topics, so both hair loss and hyperpigmentation. Now, to talk about both these topics in more detail, I've invited a very special guest named Dr. Sharon Delmo. Delmo, who's also a dermatologist and has got loads of experience in both hair loss and dermatology. Now, I know the COVID vaccine has had loads of long-term effects on um, a variety of different patients, including both hair loss, memory fog, and the odd influenza-like symptoms after actually vaccinating. Now, to talk about the link between the COVID vaccine or COVID in general and hair loss, I will be discussing this towards the end of part one. Um, but to start off, uh, to talk about hair loss in general, let's introduce our guest. Hi, Sharon. Thank you so much for coming on the show. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Hi, thank you for having me. Oh, good. Thank you for coming on. Um, it'd be nice if you actually introduce yourself um, to our viewers at home. Of course. Hi, I'm Sharon, Dr. Sharon Belmont. I'm a dermatology consultant in London, and I actually have specialist interests in skin of colour and hair loss. Interesting. And hair loss in general. Now, I know as you get older, it's probably one of the, one of the factors which stress all of us out. And there's so many different supplements, so many different promises being made on, on market products. Um, but one term I actually came across uh, before the show um, was known as, I think I'm pronouncing it correctly, telogen effluvium. You know, what is that term and what does that have to do with hair loss? Right, so telogen effluvium is actually a very common form of hair loss that we see in dermatology a lot. So there are different phases of the hair cycle. The main phase, the anagen phase, is the growth phase, and most hairs are in the growth phase at any um, one point in time. And what happens in telogen effluvium is due to a trigger, and there are many potential triggers, but the hair shifts from the anagen, the growing phase, into the telogen phase, which is a resting phase. That usually lasts about two to three months. And at the end of this phase, the hair sheds. So when people have telogen effluvium, what they notice is mass shedding. And they present to us in clinics with lots and lots of shedding. And they notice that the density of their hair is less than it used to be. Their hair feels thinner. And when they wash their hair, they, they, they see more hair coming out. That's telogen effluvium. Great. And with hair loss in general, now, I know, you know, throughout your life, you kind of can lose hair from, you know, when you're just brushing your hair, et cetera, or using um, high levels of heat. But when should you actually seek expert health when it comes to hair loss? Well, I would say as a dermatologist, if you notice hair loss that is more than normal, so so most people lose average about 50 to 100 hairs per day, that's normal. But if you notice yeah. there's an excess, right, if there's an excess or you see bald patches in your scalp, or like I mentioned before, your hair is just shedding and shedding way more than usual, I would seek help as early as possible from a, a GP or a dermatologist. Many people don't realize that dermatologists deal with hair. We do skin, hair, and nails. So seek help as early as possible. The reason is there are many causes of hair loss. Telogen effluvium is one, but there are many causes and you want to have a, the correct diagnosis as early as possible so that you can start the right treatment as early as possible because there are some other types of hair loss that are irreversible. So you really want to get in there as early as possible so you don't, you know, result in irreversible damage. Definitely. And that's a really good point, actually. A lot of people actually are unaware that dermatologists can actually deal with hair, hair problems as well. So right. a, a very key, <laughs> key important message. And uh, you mentioned, um, you know, risk factors and causes. You know, what are the uh, certain factors out there that can worsen hair loss or, or telogen effluvium? Well, telogen effluvium can be caused by so many uh, potential triggers. So the, the thing that we've seen the most in the last two years is what people are calling COVID hair loss. And that's really telogen effluvium. So telogen effluvium can be triggered by illness, particularly febrile illness. So when you're really sick with a fever, 
um, major illnesses. So COVID is the reason why we've seen more of it. Two, three months after COVID, people have had hair, hair loss um, and excessive shedding. But surgery, um, stress is a, plays a major role. And of course, we've seen a lot of increased levels of stress in the last two years as well because of everything that's gone on. Um, pregnancy, so postpartum shedding is actually telogen effluvium as well. Uh, dietary restrictions, people that um, have really, really strict diets or lose weight, um, you know, really, really quickly. Um, people with iron deficiency, particularly women that may have heavy periods and, and, and can then often have low iron levels. A thyroid disorder, some certain drugs can cause it. Lots of, there are lots of potential triggers. And about a third of cases, actually, we do not find the cause, um, but there are many potential triggers. Uh, very thorough, yeah, because um, I know a lot of deficiencies in general, like, like you said, iron deficiency, you know, right. can actually cause hair loss. And a lot of, uh, a lot of people actually um, go undetected, you know, with, with the iron levels. It is really important. You, you do actually go for your annual blood tests as well. Um, just to Absolutely. check if you are deficient of any vitamins. Um, and you Absolutely. mentioned um, COVID. Now, you know, I've actually been hearing loads of the things uh, when it comes to the COVID vaccine and long-term side effects and hair loss, um, a significant hair loss, losing chunks of hair um, has been a, a recurring um, pattern with a lot of the patients as well. Um, yeah. Was there an established link between the COVID vaccine and hair loss? Not to my knowledge. There has been a link between COVID, but not because of COVID the virus. It's because of COVID the illness. So as I mentioned, telogen effluvium can be triggered by illness, particularly febrile illness when people are very sick with fever. And of course, COVID uh, caused that in a lot of people. So mm -hmm. the, the actual illness can trigger the hair loss rather than the virus itself. But I, I haven't heard of um, much of a link between the, the vaccine and the and telogen effluvium yet. <laughs> yeah, no, hopefully um, there isn't that link. Uh, but definitely more studies to be done on, on the COVID virus and long-term effects in general. And Absolutely. In terms of, and now in terms of treatments, you know, there's so many products out there on the market. You have the hair gummies, uh, you have different sort of collagen shots uh, out there. Now, are these a waste of time and money? Or, or should someone actually include a supplement in their uh, in their diet to actually help stimulate hair growth? It depends. Uh, it's quite controversial. Um, <laughs> one or two supplements that I recommend. I won't mention any brands. There are the, there's little evidence for some of the ingredients and in supplements. Um, there are one or two ingredients that have better evidence, and I tend to recommend the supplements that have those, those ingredients. What I will say about supplements is because every patient comes in and tells me they've had biotin and it's not working and they're taking biotin. Biotin does not make hair grow uh, unless you're biotin deficient, which is extremely rare. So don't waste money taking lots and lots and lots of biotin, expecting the hair to grow. It will not make it grow, and it can actually alter blood results like uh, thyroid blood tests and troponin T, which is a cardiac enzyme that we use to detect um, heart attacks. So I absolutely advise not to take biotin to treat um, hair loss uh, unless there's a deficiency, which there usually isn't. Oh, well, that's super interesting actually, because um, a lot of people out there probably didn't actually know that link between biotin and blood tests. Um, no. so that's a you know, the key message here is really not to to get too sucked into the whole uh, marketing that you see you know on Instagram yeah. and Facebook about the promising results you see about these hair loss products. We'll definitely yeah. um, talk more about um, hair loss products and um, non drug therapies for hair loss, um, hopefully in part two. Um, but just before we actually go on to our break very soon, is there any resources? that are out there for, for patients to find a bit more about hair loss or fusion effluvium we've talked about today? 
Uh, there's Alopecia UK, so there's a website that uh, covers all, lots of different types of hair loss. Um, there is, there's a type of hair loss called scarring alopecia. That's one of the irreversible types of hair loss I, I, I mentioned. In the US, there is a scarring alopecia foundation, so they have a great website as that well. And um, there's a, a condition that predominantly affects um, uh, women, uh, women of African descent called CCCA. Um, which again is an irreversible form of hair loss and I actually run a support group uh, with the Scarring Alopecia Foundation for that, the CCCA UK support group. Uh, we do that quarterly. So there are a few different resources for different types of, of hair loss. Brilliant. Thank you so much for sharing those resources. I think we'd also touch on um, your helpful Instagram page as well when we hit uh, part two. Um, <laughs> um, coming on to... Um, part two, we will be talking about a bit more about non-drug therapies for hair loss, hyperpigmentation and what causes it. If you've missed any of part one, um, don't worry, we will have a copy on our YouTube page at British Muslim TV. My name's Naira, I'm your GP host. Please tune in again after the break. Welcome back after the break. My name is Nara and I'm a GP pharmacist and host on today's health show. Now, today's topic of discussion, we'll be uh, talking about hair loss and hyperpigmentation. Now, I've introduced um, a guest. Her name's Dr. Sharon Belmo in part one. Hi, Dr. Sharon. Thank you so much for coming back on the show. <laughs> now, um, be nice. I think in part two that we just go straight back into the questions and um, I did want to actually discuss more about a drug therapies for hair loss. Now, um, there is a lot of non-drug therapies and drug therapies, so drugs that you can get on prescription now for hair loss. I think um, one of the most common ones that you can also buy over the counter, I think, um, is known as minoxidil, and, you know, finasteride is another one. You know, what's your thoughts on minoxidil? Uh, I think it comes under the brand Regain shampoo, <laughs> et cetera, for men. You know, yeah, what's your thoughts um, on the medicine? You know, uh, do you have any uh, good positive case studies to share with us? I actually uh, use or recommend minox or prescribe minoxidil a lot. I use it a lot. It's licensed for the treatment of androgenetic alopecia, so a, a different type of hair loss to what we were talking about earlier. Uh, also known as female pattern hair loss or male pattern hair loss, so or male balding. Um, it's very, very, that's the most common cause of hair loss. Um, and it's licensed to treat uh, this type of hair loss. And it actually, we don't fully understand how it works, but we do know that it prolongs the anagen phase. So the phase I mentioned earlier on, the growing phase, it prolongs this, this phase. So you'd hopefully, hopefully keep more hair on your head. <laughs> Um, yeah. It does work. It has a lot of good evidence. It's been around for a very, very long time. Um, it was based on a, a, the tablet form of it, which we do use in dermatology in small, small doses. And they used to use minoxidil as a tablet, as a blood pressure tablet, and they would find that as a side effect, people would grow hair. So uh, that's why it was um, uh, made into uh, a, a solution. And you can buy it, but sometimes we prescribe it in the tablet form or at higher doses, and it, it does work. Sure. But you keep using it. If if it works, you have yeah. to keep using it. Otherwise, the hair you grow will fall out. So <laughs> definitely, yeah, that's what I've heard. Is you need to be consistent with it, uh, as you know, sudden withdrawal can actually cause withdrawal, hair loss. Um, important, yeah, yeah, yeah. An important thing is is that um, it's evidence based as well. You know, there has been clinical studies to show that. Uh, it can uh, help with hair loss. Definitely yeah. so another product that I'd actually recommend as well as the pharmacist. And, you know, let's talk about cosmetic procedures. Uh, you know, there's people out there go traveling to Turkey to get, you know, a hair transplant. Um, there's platelet-rich plasma therapy. That's a pretty yeah. new cosmetic procedure now for, for hair loss. Can you tell us a bit more about the therapy? Yeah, it's relatively new. I, I do it in my clinic. Uh, it's a procedure, unfortunately, not covered on any test, but what we do is draw uh, your blood 
And then we spin it to separate the blood into the different components. And what we're interested in is the plasma part because this has your own natural growth factors. So we, we draw out the plasma and inject it into the scalp with the hope that your growth factors will help to stimulate hair growth. And the results are variable, but it, it can work and it's pretty harmless. You know, it's your own blood. No one's allergic to their own blood. So um, mm -hmm. the only thing is it's a little expense. It's not covered by NHS and it, it is costly. We generally do um, once a month for three months. And then if it works well, maintenance, which, which would be say six monthly. So it is costly, but if it works well and you can afford it, then uh, it's... Why it's, not? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, you're definitely like another uh, non-drug therapy um, to actually consider when it comes to hair loss. Might be a cheaper option compared to, you know, going for that hair transplant. Exactly. <laughs> but brilliant. Yeah, that, yes. Thank you so much for giving us like you know, a good insight into the different therapies for hair loss. Uh, I think it'd be um, a great time now to, to kind of move on to, you know, dermatology and, uh, and the skin side uh, of your expertise. Now, um, you know, another question I actually did have in mind was, you know, why is dermatology so important for uh, people with skin of colour, you know, for the BAME um, ethnicity group? This is uh, my area of interest. It's actually my passion. The reason is traditional dermatology basically focused on 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 white skin lighter skin types with very little emphasis on darker skin types and dermatology for skin of color really focuses on skin conditions and darker skin types and the reason why that's important is because conditions can appear different on darker skin types and if you only learn uh, you know how to diagnose them in light skin types you may miss them in darker skin types and there are also more uh, some conditions that are more common in certain ethnic groups or unique to certain ethnic groups you know our population is becoming more and more diverse so it's I think it's it's really important that all dermatologists now you know especially in this country have to be able to treat all skin types and learn on all skin types so um Definitely. It's something I'm very passionate about, yeah. <laughs> no, definitely. It's, it's really important that it is actually spoken about, especially yeah. when there's so many different skincare routines out there, uh, and you need to know what products are actually best suited, you know, for your skin tone and texture. And uh, yeah. in terms of, you know, the term hyperpigmentation, you know, what is hyperpigmentation? I know it's super common uh, in those in the vein um, ethnicity group as well. It's very common. One of the most common reasons why um, I see um, patients of color in, in my clinics, oh, actually. Hyperpigmentation just means increase in pigment. So some people call it dark spots, uh, dark patches. It's increase in melanin, the pigment that gives us our color um, in, in certain areas of the skin. It's very common. And any factors which can actually worse, worsen hyperpigmentation or is it just pretty inevitable, it just worsens as you get older. Uh, no, I mean, there are many reasons why people may develop hyperpigmentation. There are many causes, it can occur on its own. There are certain disorders, for example, melasma, where people have pigmentation on the face, where it just occurs on its own. And then there are conditions where the pigmentation occurs as a result of something. So post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation is very common, and that's where there's pigmentation after insult or trauma or a cut or a burn to the skin. So maybe after acne or, like I mentioned, there's a cut or after a burn or after eczema. Um, so trauma can worsen pigmentation. Uh, it's important to know the cause. Um, one very, very important factor is light. Uh, it doesn't matter how much you treat pigmentation if you do not um, use uh, sun protection or protect from both UV light and indoor light, it will get worse. So um, the melanin is very uh, reactive to both UV light, sunlight and indoor light. So it's, it's really important that we're actually wearing our um, sunscreen both indoors and outdoors then 
Right. Uh, and when it comes to um, treatments for hyperpigmentation, I know there's so many different products out there on the market, um, you know, to um, lighten, darken blemishes and spots, but um, what ingredients should we actually look out for when it comes to hyperpigmentation? There's actually a lot of treatments. I, I, I don't know if people realize how many treatments. First thing I'll say before ingredients is uh, treating the cause. <laughs> but ingredients to look for, uh, there are things that we as dermatologists prescribe. So hydroquinone, azelaic acid, retinoids. And then there are um, ingredients in what we call cosmeceuticals, things that you can buy, like vitamin C, niacinamide, kojic acid, alpha albutin, uh, cysteamine. Um, there are so many uh, uh, weaker retinoids in, in over-the-counter products. Um, and then there's procedures. Um, chemical peels can help, laser with caution. Um, there's a lot of treatment, but sunscreen, is number one because if you treat it and you don't use sunscreen it will just get worse again definitely yeah no so it is pretty important then to actually have a good kind of skincare routine in place you know uh, you've highlighted the main sort of ingredients you know like kojic acid or niacinamide or hydroquinone as well um definitely sort of ingredients you you should kind of just aim to have in your skincare routine uh, alongside that spf and um, we are coming actually towards the end of the show um, real soon, but is there any kind of tips that you'd like to like to give our viewers for, you know, those with maybe darker skin tones or, or, or colours from the Bay Misty group? Um, I'd say know your skin type. Um, don't be afraid to seek uh, dermatological help if you notice there is, you know, a change in your in your skin tone. Um, I, I know some people are sometimes dismissed, um, don't allow that to happen. Uh, if you, you do feel that there is a change in your skin that may not look as obvious as it does in, you know, textbook or classic, you know, pictures, do persist, um, do persist. And, and in terms of pigmentation, um, there are, just know that there are lots of treatments uh, out there. Uh, I know there can be stigma and it can cause a lot of psychological problems, but there seconds. are lots of treatments. Um, Definitely. Yeah, there is help out there. And for hair loss as well, lots of help. And uh, like I said earlier, make sure you, you seek help early because you don't want to uh, end up with irreversible hair loss. Perfect. Right, thank you so much, um, Sharon, for coming on to the show. Um, I think that's um, the end of our show now. Thank you so much for watching. Please join us again next week. We'll be talking about a different topic. Take care. Good night.